Peekaboo. <laughs> hey guys, Anthony 4 before Diesel. <laughs> That was my try at being funny for a minute, yeah? I'm going to do that a bit because what, what I've worked out is, you know, I can change settings on the camera and whatever, but if I want the damn light to come on, it's got to start off somewhere dark. So that's what's going on there. I'm just going to start off somewhere dark and then we'll bring it to where we need to be. This video, brake pads, front brake pads, a little bit of information, when to replace them, when not to. We've got the front wheels off this one. I'm borderline, I'm pretty well recommending pad replacement, but I'm going to tell you why I'm borderline and maybe why you should, why you shouldn't. Let's go over, over this side or the passenger side and have a quick look. Okay, so let's have a look now. Brake pad thickness. Look, it varies from vehicle to vehicle, but let's say you're looking at about 10 mil a lot of the time. These pads, I'd say probably about 10 mil is the meat. So you've got your disc rotor in the middle. That's the, that's the, right? And the deal is this is the caliper. These are the pistons. These are what they call four pot or four piston calipers, right? One, two, three, four. The pistons push out and that puts pressure on the pads, clamping the disc. That's how your brakes work. Disc brakes require a lot more pressure than drum brakes, but we're not going to go off topic and talk about that. That's why you subscribe, turn the bell on, because that's all in other videos. Your full education apprenticeship is right here. This is just one piece of the million piece jigsaw puzzle. Okay, brake pads, they can wear a little bit unevenly for different reasons. Um, including, you know, if these boots have got a tiny little hole in them and a bit of debris gets in there and then the piston doesn't work as well. Uh, it's rare that it happens. It's mainly, it's a Toyota, right? You don't have any issues at all until people change these pads and they start levering, poking around with screwdrivers, pop a hole in the boot and then water, dirt, debris get in there and it slows that piston down and then you have uneven wear. In this case here, this passenger one, it's pretty even. And we've probably, I'm estimating, we've probably got about five mil because I'll say the backing plates, the backing plates, what, about four or five? I'd say that's about four mil thick. This is the backing plate here, right? This piece here, it's metal, steel, mild steel, whatever. And the friction material, that's what's in between down in that gap there, is adhered to the backing plate. Um, and usually it stays there, but some makes and models don't. And if you drive them in salt water, they'll rust away and fall to pieces and the pads can fall off the backing plate, stuff like that as well, right? So... Just to be clear, the rotor, mate, can you do me a favour and come and spin this? As soon as you've got gloves on, I don't want to get my hands dirty. Just to get paid a picture for people, just turn this a little bit. This rotor spins in there and the pads clamp, right? Okay, thank you. Back to what you were doing. Thanks, mate. Um, so once this lining wears down, that lining each side, then of course, once it's gone, then it's going to be metal to metal. And that's what happens. And that's why if you think you're servicing your own vehicle and you're changing the oil and all that, you need to also be checking the brakes. You can have a quick check, even with the wheels on, you can look down and you can actually see, see the pads and the material that's left there from the outside. You can get down low and have a look up from this side. Other than that, you need to take the wheel off to have a really good look here. You can have a look from the ground up and inside underneath and look up there and see the pads. Right, we can do that, we're experienced with it, and we know when to take the wheels off, and quite often we don't need to take the wheels off, and we didn't this time, but I need to do a video to show you when we do. So based on this set of pads, if these were genuine, they could have done over 100,000 Ks, uh, they could be have done 150. It all depends how you drive, what sort of kilometers, whether your pads are gonna wear. Like on our 150, the pads will never wear out because it does highway Ks, we don't use the brakes. But if you're stop, start, roundabouts, round corners, city driving, you're gonna go through pads quicker. Generally on the Protos, the front pads will last about 120K at least is what I see. So if your dealer's saying it's 70 or 80, you might want to just say, you know, can you send me a photo of those? Or do you mind sh just make sure you keep the old ones for me? And they might go, well, actually, oh, you could probably get a bit longer out of them. Because if you've done 100,000 on 5 mil, you know the other 5 mil's got another 100,000, right? So why would you worry about the next 10,000 Ks? The fronts last ages. <clears throat> now to change them, this isn't a how to change the pads video. It's a matter of life and death. It's a safety thing. So you probably should take it to a professional. But because it's hard to find professionals, that's why we're giving you information trying to help you out. These pads are really easy to change. They're actually really easy. So if you decide you're not going to use these anymore and they're rubbish and you're going to get rid of them, to get the pads out, it's quite simple. You remove this clip here, undo that clip, the end of that wire goes through the two pins there. That's what retains those two pins from sliding out this way. That's the head of it there. They just slide out. This is a little clip that um, helps push the pads back so they're not squealing, noisy, whatever. There's a couple of backing plates on each back of each pad. They need to stay there. Um, this isn't a detailed video on how to change pads, by the way. 
and be very careful whose videos you watch. I always recommend you should be watching my videos. Stop spending so much time watching crap like 24 seven and um, some of the other channels I see the rubbish. Some people trying to have their own. Everybody's got a YouTube channel, but have they got any qualifications? Are they telling you the right way to do things? So we'll have more detail in other videos. Now you need to push the pistons back. There's ways to do it once you could um, you could take the, uh, you could do lots of, lots of different ways. You can use G clamps, you can use a screwdriver and gently lever it back. You just need to be careful how you do it. You don't want to damage the surface of the disc or these boots or anything really. Let's just keep it to, you don't want to damage anything. The only thing that it doesn't matter if you damage is the surface of those pads. If you've got the new ones in your hand, make sure you get the pads before you start doing this. Let's go back to the other side because this is the part I want to talk about because it's a little bit more worn and it's a bit uneven right now. See at the top there, it's not too bad. I think it's still a bit more worn and this outside one over here. And it doesn't mean there's a problem because they do wear unevenly. But see the inner one here seems to have more meat the outer. It's the outer at the lower side there that's got less than the rest. Agree? Agree. The whole pad even? Or the whole pad really, but the lower yeah. side probably even. So this is where I go. Once they're unevenly worn, I could say, but it's still got 30%. So it's going to last another 30, 40,000 Ks. I could say that. But what I'm saying is... It's unevenly worn. So I don't, if it's, how, how is it gonna continue like that? So what I actually wanna do is push the pistons back to see if they all feel even to diagnose if there's a problem or not, if it's just normal, slightly normal uneven wear. And by moving those pistons in and out, sometimes that frees them up and gets them to wear evenly. So we solve a problem because this car COVID thing and all that, you know, it's been parked for over two years, hasn't it? This is the next thing. There's gonna be another video showing the you the oil coming out. Hasn't had an oil change, I think, for over two years, right? It's only done the 10,000 10,000 or something like that anyway but it doesn't matter oil every six months right if it's sitting there for like a year you could leave the oil in there if it's not being driven at all do you know what i mean but um i don't recommend that either that's a whole nother story there's so much information to share with you guys but look my point is they're unevenly worn if i'm going to muck around and waste time here i'm going to change the pads on this one if it was my vehicle i'll be changing the pads i'll be playing with the pistons as part of all doing that making sure everything's right so it's kind of like disassemble check replace pads if all's good put it back together if we find a tight piston then we'd be looking for why is there a hole in a boot we'd be having a really good look around all the boots make sure they're fitted properly does someone change pads before these could be aftermarket bendix which quite often only last thirty thousand k's no they're not they're blue they're the gen i reckon they're the original pads okay so it's probably done a lot of highway Ks, 170 something odd K. This is how long they last, really. This is reality, guys, seriously. I mean, probably does a lot of highway Ks, a lot of assumptions there as well. Um, but 170K is where I'd expect these pads to be at. I think I replaced the rear pads uh, last time it was here. Let's have a look at the back. Let's go to the back and have a look. Wheel's still on, but we'll just have a quick look to go. We'll just slip that camera in there because we can. There we go. Heaps of meat, genuine pads, right? And it's going to be the same over that side, yep. Yeah. Right, so back to the front. I'm not going to do an inspection because it's boring. That's why we're changing it up a bit. So sorry if you got bored. Hey, if you got bored, I'm going to give you some other information. We're changing it up. You know how uh, we used to do random videos, sometimes more than one video today, sometimes miss a day. And then we got really organized, 7 p.m. every night. Guess what? That's got boring, hasn't it? Well, it's about to change again. We're going to miss a few days. We're going to give you the weekend off sometimes. No videos on Friday, Saturdays. Give you some time to go and have a look at all the older videos and catch up on those playlists. And um, sometimes we might have extra videos. Sometimes we might have short videos that are two minutes, three minutes. And sometimes some are going to go for 20 minutes, half an hour, or even an hour or longer. Uh, all the information's in there. Hope you like that. Hope that works for you. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to um, talk to the customer, see if he's happy to replace the pads. In a text message, you'll go, yep, no worries, do it. Some customers we don't even do that because I know what they're like. They just think like me, do whatever you would do sort of thing. Don't talk to me, just give me the bill. We like that because that's really easy. We don't have to think hard about it, that sort of thing. We just get the job done. So we're going to take the uh, retainer out. We're going to take the pins out. We're going to obviously put this aside as well. We're going to gently, we're going to use a screwdriver and gently push the pistons back, okay? We're using the brake pad because we're going to change the brake pad. And we're going to take notice of how much resistance there is between these two pistons and these pistons and the other side. And if it all feels about right and even, happy days, there's nothing wrong with that. And if there's an issue, we're going to look in here really closely, like that, really closely. And it could even be better to have a look on the camera like this and see if there's a problem. But from what I can see, they've never been changed. They've done 170 odd K. A bit of uneven wear like that is normal in this case. It's not a, you know, I'm not gonna talk about other makes and models and bag them out because we've got people who'll be upset about that. But you know, with the Toyotas, 
You, I don't see problems with calibers until people touch them. Genuine pads last the longest, so therefore they're the cheapest because they're the best value for money. Value for money rules over the price if it lasts longer. Do you get me? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Hit the like button. Catch on the next one. There you go. 10 minutes just on front brake pads. Hope it was helpful. I bet you it was. See ya. Bye.